Hi there. We're going to use some potassium chloride to dip for acro-eating flatworms and see if it works. It's going to work because we know it works because a lot of people have used it. And I believe that a coral up there has got acro-eating flatworms. This is a dip. I'm going to pull this down and put it in this tank and we'll see what goes on. So right now here I've got about two gallons of water. And the people who say using potassium chloride, this is just some bulk potassium chloride I got off of Amazon.com. Estimates range from a one teaspoon to two teaspoons per gallon. So I'm just gonna eye this based on what I've been doing before. And um, I think overdosing is not so bad. So I'm gonna do, in, in about two gallons, I'm gonna do a, a teaspoon and we'll see how that goes. So we drop that in like that. That may not be enough, but we'll see. That's what the point of this is. I'm mixing it to make it mixed, to dissolve it into the water. And I will grab this coral and the reaction will probably be pretty quick if it's gonna happen. You might see uh, all kinds of other stuff jump off the coral. There we go, this guy just comes right out here. I'm gonna just give it a quick inspection. Some Mahanos, yay. Just the way the coral looked beat up, it looked like it had some, but it was also hidden under a bunch of Monte Cap, so maybe not. I am not seeing eggs. Oh yeah, there's eggs. There's a bunch of eggs right there. So they're here. Some eggs here as well. Uh, so let's see what happens. And we need a timing device. Actually, I'll put this in and I'll run in the other room and get a timer. So in it goes. Take a look at that. I'm gonna set the timer for five minutes or three minutes actually. And uh, then we'll take a look. May actually start seeing things react. I've usually seen uh, pods and stuff start reacting very quickly. But I usually dose more. I don't know why I'm the big baby and dosing less. I'm basting it around a little bit just to see if anything's popping off. Uh, on the bottom, I, I want to see like pods or brittle stars dying. Yeah, so if this doesn't work, we'll just add another teaspoon or so and see what happens. I can see in the reflection some reactions. The more you put on, you know, the faster the reaction. I probably had it way overloaded in the past when I played with it. But I didn't see any problems with the corals, but we're trying to be a little bit more on target here. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I like these timers. Okay, let's see. I'm going to base the top of this and we'll see if anything comes off. There's one. Same over here. Definitely an acro eating flatworm. And they do not come off if you base like this normally. There's another one. There's another one. There's one. Another one. Sweet. Another one. Another one. More, more, more. And I was worried the dose wasn't going to be effective. Bunch of coming off, right? Because if you leave it for five minutes, it'll probably be much more obvious. The question is, are they dead? So we'll see. If this, is a, if this is not enough to kill them, I'm going to add another teaspoon and uh, I want to see them not sticking to the glass like that. But we're also just going to give it another, it's been about a minute, so we'll give it another minute for sure. But definitely a lot of flatworms coming off here. All right, so it's been, it's been five minutes total. And while the flatworms came off when I was basting. They are not dead. And I think I'd like to be, them to be dead. So since I'm not worried about dosage, I'm gonna double the dosage. All right, about another teaspoon. Ta-da! Is that right, is that a teaspoon? Yeah, it's a teaspoon. we leave that there, there's a flatworm on the bottom here that will probably start to not be alive soon if we just leave it covered in potassium chloride. This guy seems still alive. I'm going to bring this brittle star over here a little bit more. 
I haven't mixed this new batch of chloride. Yeah, see that worm? That is an X worm. Whereas these worms over here are still sticking. And you can see this worm is, this uh, brittle star is now an X brittle star. So let's mix this through and see if this allows all these uh, flatworms that are still around to become X flatworms. I set the timer for three minutes, but I think it'll have an effect sooner. And you can hear me prepping super glue because I want to glue over those eggs before we put it back. Anecdotal reports are this really wipes out the adult flatworm population. So we might as well try to wipe out the eggs at the same time so we don't have to deal with them in the future. But it still would make sense to re-dip this. And it's still sticking. It's not moving though. Yeah, look, see now they're starting to come off the bottom and not reattach. That's what I want. But if you're dipping, at least they're off, right? Coral looks no worse for the wear. I don't see any more flat ones coming off. Oh, well, I'm lied. There's one. That's why I like the big baster. And I'm basting pretty hard. How hard do you base, brah? So I knocked them off. It hasn't seemed to be killing these in a way I'd really like it to be. But it sure has gotten them to loosen up their hold on the world. That's a three minute timer. So the coral's been in there for probably six minutes. And these, these ones don't want to come off. There's a bunch of them that are definitely not living because they keep blowing around in the wind there. But we're gonna pop the coral out, deal with the eggs and put it back in the tank where it belongs. And we'll keep an eye on these flatworms. So I give it a, a good bouncing, Make see if I can get anything else off. And then I've got my super glue tube ready to go. And I saw were eggs here and I'm just going to cover them up. Bloop. Covered. There was some here. There might be some here. Oh, there's definitely some in here. Just cover the whole thing. If I had my saw set up, I just cut this whole section off. Might be some here. Being pretty liberal with the glue. You can see where I came in through in the past and did this. So it's way down from what it used to be. The amount of eggs. There were eggs everywhere last time I looked at this. That's not so bad. There's one more worm right there. No longer a living worm though. So that's good. So this, this will now get rinsed here real quick. I'm just gonna put it back up there where it was. And then we can take a look at it again later today or next week or in a few days when we have time. And I expect that airflow to color back up as well. well. Let's take a look at are these guys dying. Some people are doing 10 minute dips, 15 minute dips. So I think that's probably fine as well. I really like these. Uh, all these worms to let go. And I wonder if it was tablespoons, not teaspoons. I'll have to see what uh, Reef Bummery has recommended. But I'm gonna add another teaspoon just to see if we can make this happen quicker. And of course, teaspoon's not a great recommendation of a, of a you know, a great measure, but trying to make it easy. Just mixing it up into the water. It's really interesting because there are a bunch of ones that are no longer living, as you can see. Most of them are dead. There's just a few. My question is, I'm gonna pop this one off and we'll see if he reattaches or not. No, he is not moving anymore. He's in a little taco shape. So there's two ways that this kind of works. Either the high concentration will kill stuff quickly 
or a longer exposure will kill stuff quickly. Um, so if I can find some more flatworms, I'll do another test where we'll see uh, a longer exposure at lower concentration. I think these are just stuck on out of, there we go, now they're coming off, okay. Yeah, so these are now X flatworms. So we'll see if we can find some more and we'll do a lower exposure, lower concentration, longer duration. But it does kill him. Hot diggity dog. Peace and later.